Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a little harder to see you than I was expecting. Um, so how many of you guys would like to experience being in space in your lifetime? Yes. Or return to space? <laughs> <laughs> we, have a we have a fabulous audience here today. Uh, yeah, it was great. We got, a good, we got a some real space lovers in the group. I, I'm, in, I'm with you there. I want to go into space too. Um, and one of the things I like to say about the future of space exploration, be it robotic or human, is that it's going to take the new right stuff. Whether you're going yourself or you're in the control room or you're in the, uh, in the white room building the spacecraft, um, I think there's something that it's going to take from us, something that we get to bring um, to the culture of the future. Oh, so if you remember, the right stuff was what the Mercury 7 astronauts had. They were strong. They were smart. They were able to endure almost anything. And the new right stuff builds on that. We're going to need to be smart, strong, and endure a lot. But the future requires more from us, asks more from us. It's also going to ask us to be authentic. To be vulnerable, to be honorable. I didn't ask Leland for that. But. Um, why? Because that's what works in a high stakes, high pressure environment like space. And because that's what's going to take from us to have our work in space make the difference we want it to make on Earth and to create the culture we want to create in the future. So, now, as Ariel said, I have a ticket to fly into space with Virgin Galactic. And it's really been my dream to go into space ever since I was in kindergarten. I've imagined uh, walking on the moon and getting to see our planet. And I'm really excited because, you know, I have the chance to fulfill this childhood dream probably as soon as next year. And the truth is, I don't always feel ready. You know, and it's funny for me because I've had this ticket for 14 years. So I have plenty of time to prepare. Um, I've even writing a book on how to prepare for your space, first space flight. And I think all the time about how do we make these space flights as profound and life-changing as possible. But I don't feel like I'm the person I've always wanted to be. Like, I still pick up my hangnails when I'm stressed out. You know, I still lose it and yell at my kids. I still don't return all my emails or turn in my slides on time for my talks. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, I don't want to be this flawed. I want to be a Jedi master. I want to be someone I can be proud of all the time. I want to be able to get out of the doldrums when they hit and stay productive. I want to be able to love and accept everyone, not just the people I like. You know, I want to um, be proud of who I am all the time. Now, I don't think I'll necessarily get all that done by next year. Um, but even if I don't, um, I'm also clear that the space flight itself probably isn't going to fix all my flaws. I'm not going to come back to Earth, you know, magically healed. Um, but space does still have a magic to it. I believe that space has the power to bring us together as a species, the power to have us um, take on the things in our life that we know we want to, and the power to um, help us fall in love with our home planet. So. I still have a year, at least, so maybe I'll pull it off, we'll see. Um, but also, I think that maybe just training for space will help me do all the growing I've been putting off. And I think that maybe humanity, train, all of us training for space, will help us as a species do the growing up we need to do, and that we've been putting off. And maybe if enough of us take that on, <clears throat> we can actually create the culture of the future that we really want to see, a loving, transparent, responsible future that would be a great match for the spaceships that were inspired by science fiction as well. <clears throat> so my life is dedicated to building a culture that's going to make our planet work. And I think that building a space culture that works is a critical like, stepping stone to that. Because, well, we're smaller, I don't have to worry about all seven people just yet. I can just, we can just focus just on ourselves. And we're really the ones who are going to be the ones who are creating the culture that we take into space. We're the, like the founding fathers of space. 
And so we get to say what happens. And then what we do there, what we create there, could inspire the planet and be like, wow, maybe we could do that too. Maybe we can find better ways to resolve our conflicts and settle our differences. So one person I do know who has the new right stuff is Sir Richard Branson. He's the founder of the Virgin, uh, Virgin Galactic and the Virgin Space Companies. And he's a really visionary and thoughtful leader. And it's really a, um, a delight to get to work for someone that you actually uh, respect and admire. And so he definitely sees our space missions as something that can help build the world that he wants to see and that most of us want to see happen in our lifetimes. And so, but what does that world look like? So somebody was referencing the, uh, the high frontier earlier. So these are pictures that I grew up with in the 80s, um, picturing life, you know, out in space. And this is this, I just expected I was going to live there. I mean, I think there's still time, but um, that's what happens when you're 10. So, you know, imagine, uh, you know, getting to live in your space settlement. You know, what, you, what do you want it to be like? How do you want people to treat each other? What's the culture that you want to have in your space society? You know, and how are we going to get from here to there? Some people think it'll just happen. You know, we're going to be living our dream life. We're going to be living in this magical environment. You know, that should do it, right? Okay, but how many of you have ever been on like an awesome vacation and just totally got lost your cool? I have. How many of you have ever been to Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, and lost your cool? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, God, I'm on vacation. Why am I doing this? Right? So changing our location is not going to be enough. It's going to take more from us than that. Oh, and going to Mars. So when we start living on Mars, if we're still being the same jerks that we are here, it's not going to be fulfilling. It's, not going, to, it's going to feel like same junk, different planet. So I want to create the peaceful, enlightened science fiction culture that we grew up with to go along with all of our science fiction inspi inspired technology. So there's also a show that, um, that, the, that Amazon recently picked up, picked up that show Mars and Earth at war. And I didn't dedicate my life to opening up space to humanity to uh, have Mars declare war on Earth. My, my, I believe that we can do better than that. My commitment is that our community do the work in ourselves and in our projects and on our planet so that we can bring our best selves to space and make sure that we as a society know how to resolve our conflicts better than that and work cooperatively. So where are there conflicts on your projects or in our industry? And what can we do about it? So that's what I'm working on now. I teach the New Right Stuff training at Virgin Galactic to our staff and others in the space industry, and we help each other in doing the work to be who we've always wanted to be, because we are going to be setting the precedence for who we are going to be in space. So we work on listening, and we work on being able to articulate our mission, our personal mission, like what we came to Earth to do. We face death on the high ropes course. We clean up relationships in our lives that have gone off. We take up a daily practice of our own choosing, and we share from the heart. And it's a path that I continue to walk semester after semester. So lastly, I want to share this Earthrise image with you. It was taken during Apollo 8 on Christmas Eve, 1968. And I'm putting this out there as an invitation to you to host an Earthrise dinner. Um, and an Earthrise dinner is sort of modeled on a Jeffersonian dinner. And the idea is to have a one table conversation. And you can invite the people at your dinner to share something vulnerable about themselves, something really personal, and also share their vision and their dream for the future of humanity. And the idea is this will be a catalyst for your immediate circle to create real connection and community. And hopefully, you'll even turn it into an ongoing thing. You know, you have a group of people at your circle who can support you in fulfilling your mission. Because it's only together that we can move the world forward. And because the more we open our hearts, the better our world and our future will become. Thank you.